Hello my friends and welcome to Fishtree. This is a Fishtree Presents, a commentary by myself, Alexander Williamson, on a 1955 film called The Balanced Aquarium, talking about your home aquarium. The uh, Shed Aquarium in Chicago and the Encyclopedia Britannica film series did this little how-to on how to keep fish in the 1950s. 70 years old. There's going to be a lot of familiar sounding advice from folks like uh, Father Fish and uh, Diane Walstead, as well as uh, some advice that we might want to update. So let's go through this together now. The Henderson family likes the woods and streams. There's always something new to see. Like the waterfall their dad's about to careen over. Watching the fish in the pond. The water is so clear they can see fish and plants deep down at the bottom. Susan wonders, could we have fish at home so that we can watch them whenever we like? Father thinks they could if the children promise to learn how to take care of them. Susan is sure they can. Wait now. Look, Freddy, not a speck of dirt. Aw, how wholesome. Fred and Susan make a good beginning with a clean Guys, I think Freddy might be a little slow. Just I'm just gonna throw that out there early on. Okay. Then I guess we're ready to put it in the sand. I must have washed it about five yeah. times. You think five yeah, times is enough uh, times washing the Fred sand? And have studied a book yeah, we'll see how that aquarium. goes. First, they must have Notice they're just using sand. sand. But two, two inches. inches will hold the roots of water plants. Father Fish's rule. Grading the sand up to about four inches in the back builds a slope. Waste will slide down the slope and make cleaning easier. Deeper sand at the back also gives better support for larger plants. Green plants are as important as fish in an aquarium. A and five times sand washing sand, crystal easy. clear water. Water plants may be gathered from outdoor pools and streams or bought in pet shops. Some water plants have roots and must be handled very carefully. But not most of these, like the Val and Anacris, they can just live floating. Lead wire, which should not be put into the aquarium. It the stuff we use the today as weights on plants that's uh, called lead is actually not. It's an alloy, and it's totally safe to uh, bury in your aquarium, pretty, by the way. That's not the only reason for planting them. It takes both plants and fish to make a healthy aquarium. What do you think Fred is going to do with this wrapping paper? Is it wrap? Wrapping paper protects the plants. If water were poured directly on them, they would wash away and they might even break. Man, I'd get some better quality plants then, jeez. Fish need fresh, clean water. City water is all right, but only after it stands a day or more to allow a chemical called chlorine to evaporate. Chlorine keeps germs out of drinking water. But it may harm fish. And fluoride will turn you into a Susan communist. Susan uses a sprinkling can, and for a very good reason. Notice the many small streams of water falling on the paper? This way, air is allowed to mix with the water. And the more air we get into the aquarium, the better for the fish. Which is great, but notice there's no filter, the so that might last a few hours. In a few days, they will straighten up. Stones will help to weigh down plants and to decorate the aquarium. After all the plants and stones are in the water, the aquarium should be left alone for a couple of days so that the water can clear up before the fish are put in. Ah, no mention of Susan the nitrogen and Fred cycle. Have bought the kinds of fish that like to live together. The temperature of the water in the small jar should always be the same as the temperature in the aquarium. Otherwise, the fish may get sick. The fish are kept in separate containers so that they can be placed in the aquarium carefully. Whoa, Freddy's blown away. This way, the fish simply swim out of the small container into the aquarium. These are sword tails. Look at the tail fin. Do you see why this fish is called a sword tail? These are... Oh gosh, it's 1955. What's he going to say? Black mollies. There are many other mollies, 
some with orange stripes and some just splotched with black. But these are truly black. Phew. Next, a pair of dwarf gourami from the East Indies. You know, over by Burma, Ceylon and Siam. You know, imperial days. This one is lighter than the other because the little one is scared. When he calms down, he too will regain his bright color. These neon tetras probably came from the Amazon River in South America. They are less than an inch long, and you can see why they are called neon. Can we? A large group of neon tetras swimming about would look like little neon lights in the aquarium. Angelfish. They also came from the warm waters of South America. Hence the clamped fins. No aquarium would be complete without guppies. Guppies are named after an Englishman, a Mr. Guppy, who lived in Trinidad. One of this channel's first videos is actually on him. Check it out. Guppies make up in color, but they lack in size. What a difference 70 years of breeding makes. None of these fish will grow much bigger. But with good care, they will stay healthy and lively. There are 14 fish in the aquarium now. That is a good start. The glass top, like a roof, will keep off dust and dirt. You notice their obsession with cleanliness, dirt, and things being clean? It will help to hold the water at an even warmth in spite of temperature changes in the room. And it will keep the fish from jumping out. The surface of the water is about two inches from the top edge of the aquarium to give the fish plenty of air. I thought this was a family show. Freddy, no! An automatic electric water heater will keep the water at 70 degrees. This is a handy gadget if you have fish from warm tropical waters in a room that might get cold. The fish seem to enjoy their new home, and the plants are doing well too. That's because there is a balance between plant and animal life in the aquarium. Let's see what is meant by balance. See the bubbles on the plants? Plants give off a gas called oxygen. Fish need oxygen for breathing. In turn, fish give off a gas called carbon dioxide. Plants need carbon dioxide and sunlight to make their food. In this way, fish and plants help each other. When there is a balance between the plant and animal life in an aquarium, we call it a balanced aquarium. Oh, ooh, retro In cartoons. a balanced aquarium, there must be enough plants to provide oxygen for all the fish. Then the fish, in turn, will give off as much carbon dioxide as the plants need. So, the more fish in an aquarium, the more plants will be needed. Got some little barbs there. Nature provides such a balance in the ponds and rivers that teem with fish. Just as in our aquarium, the fish and the plants depend on each other. In the pond, fish usually find plenty to eat. In the All right, aquarium, Susan, you got one take. Oh, you just, you're just putting food Healthy on the glass. Fish are hungry. Even so, they must not be fed too much. And only once a day. Father fish, is that at too much? At time, Susan usually looks at the thermometer to make sure the water temperature is right. About 70 degrees. Just about freezing for a angelfish. A balanced fish. aquarium needs some sunlight and should be placed near a window. For maximum algae. Light from a north or east window is best. Plants need the light to make food. Susan and Fred are really beginning to enjoy their aquarium and the balance of plant and animal life in it. They keep all the things they need for the aquarium right beneath it. There is the fish food and a fish net. The net is used to remove fish that get sick or die. And there is a glass suction tube. Such a tube is used for cleaning the aquarium by sucking up dirt from the bottom. This way your plants will never have nutrients in that sand. Here are two more fish for the aquarium. Catfish. Catfish are cleaners or scavengers. There are uh, Corridora Aeneas. And every aquarium should have some. They eat waste material and help to keep the aquarium clean. 
Susan has decided to mark down in a notebook the things she learns about fish. One must keep clean. She has already written down the three most important rules for keeping a balanced aquarium. Obsessively clean and actually feed in the, the right feeding kinds room. of food and not too much of it. About what they can eat in a few minutes. Do not overcrowd the fish. Too many fish will quickly use up the oxygen in the water and get sick. No word on ammonia or nitrates, nitrates. The water temperature hmm. must be kept right, about 70 degrees. Perfect for angelfish getting ick. Seriously, 70 degrees. I, I'm curious if that's why they had such a hard time with angelfish for so long. In nature, there is a balance between plant life and fish life. And a balanced aquarium is a copy of nature. You too can make an aquarium in your hall or at school and discover the enjoyment of observing by yourself. Well, there it is, folks, how to keep a balanced aquarium. Uh, remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you like this sort of uh, content, and I'll see you guys next time.